This is Ben, and welcome to my life. Hey there, this is Ben from BeEmotion.Design, and I'm here for Boris Effects to show you how I use the new Particle Illusion in Continuum 2019 to amp up the energy in this video open that I created. Some of you may remember Particle Illusion from way back in the day when it was a standalone application with a bunch of really great presets and a huge emitter library. Well, guess what? It still has a lot of really great presets and a huge emitter library that ships with the product. But now it's an integrated plugin that can be used in a variety of hosts and applications. So I do a lot of motion graphics and 3D animation. So normally I would use Particle Illusion inside of After Effects as a design element or for a visual effects shot. But what if you're an editor on a tight deadline and you need to add some graphical elements to your edit? Well, Boris has your back. So we're here inside of Adobe Premiere, and as a side note, most of what I'll be showing you as it relates to the functionality of the plugin itself is almost identical to how the plugin functions inside of Avid. In looking at the timeline, I'll break down the color coding so you can get an idea of what you're looking at. All the green clips on video tracks one and two represent video footage. The light blue clips on V3 are adjustment layers, and the rose colored clips on V4 and V5 are text layers, and then all the other purple or magenta colored clips are black video clips that have an instance of particle illusion on them, and then I've changed the blending mode of the clip to composite onto the layers below it. Like the movie Pulp Fiction, I'm not going to start at the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to start in the beefy middle section and then work my way back to the beginning because the beginning shots are a bit more advanced and I want to get the quick stuff out of the way first. I'm going to mute the audio since it's irrelevant and it'll just get in the way and be distracting as I scrub through the timeline. So we'll start here on the top and work our way down the layer stack. I'll hide all the video layers at once by holding down shift and then clicking the eyeball icon. And now I'll unhide video track 10 by clicking the eyeball icon again. And as I scrub through the timeline, you can see this layer of lines and arrows, which act as kind of a user interface element. And if we open up the effects controls, you'll see that I have a single instance of particle illusion applied to the layer, along with a couple of masks that are revealing the effect. You can see if I delete the masks, the particle illusion effect fills the entire screen. So I've put the masks on to limit the effect within these areas so I can just have a hint of the effect. And if I hit the launch particle illusion button in the plugin interface, the particle illusion interface opens up. And there are four sections to the interface. First, you have the browser on the left hand side, which also shows a preview of the selected emitter in the browser. There's also a search field if you know you want something specific, like in this case, I knew I wanted some kind of a UI element. And wouldn't you know it, there's actually a HUD UI category. Uh, you can either click on the disclosure triangle to reveal the contents of the category, or you can double click the category itself, and it'll do the same thing. Once the category is revealed, you can see that there are a lot of presets to choose from. And this is just the HUD UI category. There are almost two dozen categories to choose from. Water, fire, sci-fi, nature, abstract, and all these presets are really great. Once you find the preset you're looking for, just double click it to add it to the stage. And two things will happen. First, the emitter will be added to the stage. And the stage is this black screen that occupies the upper right hand quadrant of the interface. The second thing that will happen is the emitter will be added to the effects control panel to the right of the browser. Now, you may not see anything happen on the stage. And that may be because you just need to hit the play button or hit the space bar to start the timeline. Once the timeline is started, you can go to the effects control panel to adjust a bevy of parameters. Some of the emitters even have sub emitters with a whole list of parameters that are specific to that sub emitter. Let me delete this emitter from the effects panel and show what I did to tweak the preset. The name of the preset that I used was code breakers. So I'll type that into the browser search field and you'll see a handful of emitters show up. And the one that I chose is in this uh, miscellaneous category and I'll double click it to add it to the stage. 
something to keep in mind when adding emitters to the interface timeline. Your timeline represents the length of the clip that's in the timeline of your host application. So if we cancel out of the particle illusion interface and double click the clip in the timeline and load it into the source monitor. And if you look down in the lower right hand corner of the panel next to the wrench icon, you'll see the length of that clip. And in this case, the clip is 14 seconds and 18 frames. And if you right click on the time code, a contextual menu reveals some alternate time representations of that clip. And in this case, I want to know how many frames I have. So I'll select frames and it shows me 354 frames. So let's hop back into Particle Illusion. And if you look on top of the stage, you'll see the duration of the clip. 354 frames. Another thing to keep in mind, when you add an emitter to the stage, it will add it at the point in the timeline that the playhead is currently at. So if the playhead is at frame 117, that's where the emitter will start emitting particles. To change the start time of the emitter, simply select the emitter in the effects control panel and then go to the timeline and click on this little triangle right here and slide it to the beginning of your timeline. Next, I want to change the shape of the emitter to fit the size of my frame. Uh, and in this case, 1920 by 1080. So you can either click on this little box here in the corner of, of the edge of the emitter and drag it to the size that you want, or you can enter exact numbers into the parameter field for width and height. All I wanted from this emitter was the arrows and the lines, so I wanted to get rid of everything else. And since you currently can't delete the sub emitters, uh, the quickest way to do that is to change the opacity parameter of the sub emitter to zero. And I wanted to get rid of the big letters, the grid, the small letters, and the words. So I set all of their opacity parameters to zero. All the other parameters I left unchanged and then I clicked apply. So now if I unhide the video layer, nothing happens and we don't see any video. And that's because the plugin is added to a black video layer. So what you're seeing here is particle illusion on black video. So um, this is where the layer blending modes come into play. So make sure the clip is selected and go to the opacity parameter in the effects control panel and change the blend mode from normal to screen. And now your particle illusion layer is composited on top of everything below it. So that process is basically the same for every other layer and instance of particle illusion. Create a black video layer, add particle illusion, find the preset you want, tweak to your heart's content, and then click apply. Tweak some more, change the layer blend mode and move to the next task. Now, like I said earlier, I want to circle back to the beginning of this video opener to answer a burning question that I'm sure you're probably already wondering. Ben, can I add particle illusion to an actual video layer, track an object in that layer, and then link the emitter to the tracking data? And the answer is, Boris has got your back. Of course you can. In the beginning of this video, I've done exactly that. I've added particle illusion to some video footage of this clown posing as a human. And I can call him a clown because the clown is actually me. So one of the most brilliant additions to the Continuum suite of plugins is Mocha Tracker integration inside the plugin itself. So I'll delete the current instance of particle illusion and start fresh by adding a clean version of the plugin to the clip. I can either drag the plugin directly onto the clip, or if the clip is currently selected, I can drag the plugin into the effect control panel, or just double click, which is what I do. Next, I'll go to the transform controls, and as you can see, by default, it's set to none. So if you drop down the pull down menu, you'll see three options, world, emitter, and world plus emitter. So how do we know which option to choose? Well, the obvious answer is it depends on what you want to do. Typically, you can think of it like this. If your emitter is going to be moving from frame to frame, but the camera is static, then you choose emitter. If your emitter is static, but you want it to move with the movement of the camera, then you'd select world. And lastly, if the emitter is moving from frame to frame and so is the camera, then you would select both. Now, when we use the term world in this instance, while it does represent the movement of the production camera, it's really the production camera as it relates to the emitter itself, not the overall scene. 
Let me show you what I mean. Let's go into the Particle Illusion UI and we'll add this electric glow preset and zero out all of the position data. And the reason that we're making sure that all the position data is zeroed out is that Mocha will actually be providing all of the position tracking data that we need. So let's close out of the Particle Illusion UI. Now we'll select Emitter from the drop down menu and go into the Mocha UI. And since we're tracking the emitter, we'll disable the world center layer. And uh, let's move the emitter offset search area over the area that we're going to track. And for this clip, we'll track the eyeball. So I'll scale the search area to make sure that there's enough pixel data for Mocha to analyze. And then I'll place the emitter offset crosshair right on the eyeball. And now I'll click the track forward. And as you can see, Mocha did a really good job of tracking the eyeball. And we'll save and close out of the Mocha UI. As you can see, something doesn't look right. And the reality is that the result that we're getting is right based on what we told the plugin to do. So if you click on this show motion path checkbox, you'll see the actual path the emitter is making. If you think of the emitter as the tip of a garden hose or the nozzle, we just told Mocha to move the nozzle along a path, and that's what it's doing. It's moving along the path and it's spraying particles in its wake. And that's not the look that I want. I want it to look like there's fire shooting out of my eyes, and in order to get that result, the emitter needs to remain stationary and the world needs to move. So let's reset Particle Illusion. We'll open up the UI and we'll click on the stage to add the electric glow. Select World and then open the Mocha UI. And we will disable the emitter layer and select World Center and then drag the World Center search area over the eyeball and drag the World Center crosshair onto the eyeball itself and hit Track Forward. We'll exit out of the Mocha UI and we'll click Save. And now when we hit play, it still doesn't quite look right. And the reason it doesn't uh, look right is I intentionally didn't zero out the position data of the emitter in the Particle Illusion UI. So I can show you what happens when you don't do that. But this actually gives me the opportunity to show you the offset parameters in the plugin itself. So I can use these parameters to adjust it so it's right over my eyeball. And then when we hit play, now it looks right. Just so you are aware, if you don't want to use the offset parameters for whatever reason, you can always go back into the Particle Illusion UI and zero out the position parameters of the emitter, and that'll work as well. And while that's all fine and dandy, that's actually not what I wanted to do for this shot. I wanted a UI type element tracked onto my face. So again, we'll reset the Particle Illusion plugin and let's go into the Particle Illusion UI. The preset that I used for this was Tron Grid Map. So I'll type that into the search area and I'll double click the preset to add it to the stage and click apply. We'll select World from the Transform drop-down menu and click on Mocha to track. So let's disable the emitter offset. And since I want this UI element to be tracked to my face, I'll put the search area around my face and I'll hold down shift plus option or control plus alt on windows to constrain the, the scale proportions. And I'll make sure I get a wide enough search area so Mocha has enough pixel data to work its magic. And then I'll put the world center crosshair on my nose and track forward. And then we'll exit and save out of Mocha. And uh, when I hit play, we can see that the UI element is tracked perfectly to my face. But the UI element is a little too big, so let's go back into the Particle Illusion UI and adjust the width and height parameters to something about half the size. So we'll enter 500 by 500. While we're here in the UI, if you're not seeing any kind of representation of the footage of the clip uh, that the plugin is applied to, that's probably because the view settings in the stage uh, are set to composite over black. And you can check that by clicking this little icon here at the top of the stage. And you can just change uh, that to composite over video. Also, if you're inside the Particle Illusion UI and you've already tracked your footage, you won't see a representation of the track uh, because the tracking data exists outside of the Particle Illusion interface. And uh, when you click apply and you exit out of the UI, you'll see all of that married together in the plugin. 
realizing that I'm a bit long winded and I'm trying to be cognizant of your time. So I want to show you a few other things and then we'll call this tutorial done. So this clip has two challenges associated with it. It's speed ramped, which is to say that I've adjusted the overall speed of the clip by 300% and I want a separate track point for each eyeball. No problem. Boris has got your back. So let's address the first issue, speed ramping. If you're going to speed ramp your footage, then the plugin needs to be applied before the speed ramp. And in this case, I did the edit first and then I started applying effects after. So here's what happens when you apply particle illusion to a speed ramped clip. We'll add particle illusion, reveal the Mocha tracker, hop into Mocha, place our track points, and we'll track. But as you can see, something wonky happens to the track when the eyelid closes. And that's a result of the rotation function in the track. So the easiest way to fix this is to undo all the way back to the beginning of the track and then disable rotation and track forward again. Now you can see that Mocha has tracked the position and the scale and the track is solid. So we'll exit and save and go back into Particle Illusion. We'll select the preset we desire and then exit Particle Illusion. Back in the timeline, we see that the track didn't work. So instead of getting into the reasons why it's not working, like I tell my son, sometimes that's just the way it is, accept it and move on. So is there a solution? Well, yeah, of course there's a solution. I wouldn't have brought this up if I didn't have a solution. I'm not that cruel. <laughs> so we'll delete particle illusion from the clip and change the speed back to 100%, nest the clip, double click the nested clip, add particle illusion to that clip, change transform to world, Enter Mocha, set your track points, track, save and exit, enter the particle illusion interface, add the desired emitter, click apply, Bob's your uncle, you're done. So this brings us to issue number two. What if you want to add a glow to the other eye? Well, then you just add another instance of particle illusion and you do the same process. And that, my friends, is how it is done. Well, that's all I have for now. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new content is uploaded. Also, follow Boris Effects on all of his social media channels for exclusive tips, tricks, and other interesting quips. I'm Ben for bmotion.design, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.